Hey, in this video, we're going to make a car wheel with Substance 3D Modeler. Keep in mind that Modeler is still in beta. It's actively developed. Things might change. Uh, things might be a bit rough. There might be some workarounds, but I'm just here to show you how to make a fun little sketch and get started with Substance 3D Modeler. So let's jump straight into it. I've got the clay tool selected and I'm gonna go for the uh, cylinder here. I'm gonna make it quite a bit bigger because I want my wheel to be a bit bigger, make it a bit flatter like so. And I'm going to add a bit of a bevel to it. Now I'm gonna keep my wheel oriented in this orientation because I'm gonna do some repetition that makes it easier to use this orientation. And so before I apply my clay, happy with everything, then I press space bar to apply it. And as you can see now, this one's my brush, that's the clay that's applied. I'm gonna start removing some clay from that. So if I press E, or if I click the eraser, my brush changes to eraser mode. And anything that intersects then gets removed. It's gonna make this a bit smaller. I'll reduce the bevel quite a bit. And let's see, intersect that. Press space bar again, remove some of that. I'm gonna add a bit of taper to it and then make this quite a bit smaller and flip it around by scaling it negatively. Moving it in like so, scaling it down a little bit and then pressing spacebar again to subtract it. Now I wanna reset these settings and I can mess with the sliders, but if you just click on the um, shape again, it resets it to the default orientation and size. So I'm gonna scale it up again and then hit spacebar again to remove the center of my rim. Now I wanna remove a, an edge around the outside as well. So I'm gonna scale this down a bit and there's a fill setting that you can use that makes it hollow on the inside like so. So let's make that a bit bigger. Move it down so it intersects like that. Make it a bit smaller like so. Then again, press spacebar. And I might've gone a bit too far with the fill. So I'm gonna increase the size a bit. Hit spacebar again. I've removed a section of the rim on the inside. So this is my first basic part and it shows you adding and removing clay. But I want to add a few different parts as well. This is gonna be a split rim out of multiple pieces, like a stamped steel truck thing. So I'm gonna create a new layer for a separate piece. I'll right click, click the new layer button. And I'm gonna use a sphere in this case. So I'll scale up the sphere. And I'm gonna look at it from the top. Make sure it's just hitting those sides. Move it up a bit. And I want to squash it down to make it much flatter. Move it somewhere over there. Looks about good. And you see it's, it's sticking through the sides. So I'll make it a bit smaller again. And we'll move it down some more. So that looks about right. So again, press space bar to create it. Now I want to remove the backside from that. So again, I'm gonna hit E for razor, move it down a bit. And then I'm just gonna hit space bar and remove the backside to hollow it out a little bit. I could have scaled it as well. Either method works. So there's that, I've got that. And I'd like to, cut out these typical, you know, like bent tapered rectangular squares from the edge of the rim. And um, I could use the um, this brush for that. And there's even an option that lets me remove them with repetition. So if I turn on radial symmetry and then move this out, I could start playing with the things like the taper, right? And I'll rotate this. And if I want to rotate with a snapping degree, I can hold down control like so. But the issue is if I'm doing this is I'd, I'd actually like this shape to be bent a little bit, right? So I want it to be bent and to follow that contour. And that's not possible to do with the standard shape. There's no bend slide or anything for, uh, for this. So what I'm gonna have to do is have to create a new layer and this new layer will become a Boolean to subtract from this spherical shape underneath it. Let's do that. Click on the new layer button. Like so, I'll do a few more tweaks, like give it a bit of a bevel, stretch them out a bit, and then have them intersect. Like so, and sit a bit closer to the edges. So this is like the, the unbent shape that I'm placing there. I hit space bar to create that layer. Now that 
layer is created. Now I have to warp and bend it. So there's another tool for that. It's the third one, the warp tool. If I click that, it, it's by default, it's in this weird um, surface mode. Well, it's not weird, but it doesn't make sense for this one here. If I press G for gizmo or use the placement buttons here. It swaps to another mode. I can press R to reset the orientation and then R again to place it in the middle. And then I can easily position it right there, nice in the middle. I'll make it quite a bit bigger, make it really big to really encompass it. Because if you're distorting something, the key with the warp tool is often to make it bigger than you expect it to be. And it works just the same way. You press spacebar and then you do a move and you can see that I'm bending this thing. So something like that looks about right. So the curve is, is correct. Now they've, they've moved too far. I wanna push them down again. So you can use the warp tool for that as well. Increase the hardness. So that, that middle bubble, it's gonna be 100% hardness. And there's a soft fall off from the hard parts to the soft parts. If you don't have a hardness, it's basically an S curve fall off from the middle to the edges. I'm just making sure this is encompassed. And then press spacebar again and move it down and place it approximately there in the right position. So I've used five of them now, but if you um, if I change this now, it's not possible to do that because what the uh, radial symmetry does is it repeats the action five times. So you can't go in and change it afterwards. I'll show you a different method in a moment. But right now I'm happy with this. I'm going to double click in an empty area to scope out. And this brings me to the scene level. And you can tell that I'm in the scene level by having the select tool. And I can select my individual parts easily. So to do the Boolean, I'll select the cutter, right click, go to the Boolean actions and mark it as a subtractor. And then once I'm happy with that, I think they're in a good position. I can click on apply and the subtract is applied. Now, if I zoom in, I see that the resolution is actually not great. You can see that um, it's a bit of a jagginess going on there. So to fix that, I'll just undo this for a moment, select this mesh, right click and we'll increase the resolution by one step. And you can actually tell from this preview that it's uh, went down to uh, double the resolution. So again, if I right click and I click apply on the Boolean, you can see that's a little bit sharper now. It's not perfect. I'll, I'll show you a way to, to improve that. So when I've done the cut and I'm happy with it, I can select this guy over here. I can say done if I'm finished. And then we can just delete them. I, I don't want to keep them anymore. You can keep them if you want to repeat the action, but I'm actually happy with the way it is right now. And uh, to smooth out some of that jagginess, um, we have to go back into this shape. So how, how do you go back to editing that shape? Well, you can edit all of them at the same time, but it's better to isolate your selection by double clicking, scoping into that shape and working only on that one. We're gonna use the smooth tool for this, see? And the symmetry is still on, which means that I'm working on all edges at the same time. It's perfect. I'll zoom in a bit on this corner here. I'm just gonna slowly go around and do a little bit of smoothing on that. This is not the most precise operation, but again, keep in mind, we're not making a CAD model here or anything, just a little fun exercise. Um, so smoothing it like that is totally fine. Wanna make the inside a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to reset my warp to the middle again. And this time I'm gonna turn off the radial symmetry because I just want to do it once in the middle. Bring this one up here, make it a bit smaller. I'll reduce the hardness some more. Then hit spacebar and push it in to warp that rim inwards a little bit. And I'm just going to repeat that, like do it again, make that a bit smaller, spacebar, push it up to give us that basic rim shape. So to continue with our rim, there's one more thing I want to do. I want to add the bolts that screw it to the car. And we're going to use a different technique for that. So I am going to scope out of this layer. I then go into clay tool. Automatically, it's going to create a new layer. For me. So I'll select the um, cylinder, go up. And you see that the radial symmetry is still on. I don't want that this time. I want to use a different technique. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to make one of these guys first. So let's place this one over here. Let's scale it down a bit, get into approximately the right position. That's still a bit too big. Position that around. That looks about right. And of course, always add bevel. That just looks a little bit nicer. Hit spacebar to apply it. Now that's just one. And I'm gonna refine this a bit more, but let me show you first. If I scope out again, select this one over here, then right click, 
And instead of radial symmetry, I'll use the radial repetition. And if I click this, this is different. It doesn't repeat an action, but it actually duplicates the object five times and they're linked together. So to show you what that does, if I can now move this one individually, much easier to work with if you wanna do the positioning. For this Boolean, it doesn't matter eventually because you're committing it, but for this guy, I wanna change that little bolt and it makes it easier to use the repetition instead of symmetry. Now, to edit it, I have to double click to jump in. I'll edit this individual one. So I'll add a little uh, hexagon like that, move up a bit. Uh, let's add a little bit of a, a bevel here, spacebar to apply it, and I'll switch to this one, scale that down maybe a little smaller and just while holding spacebar i can extrude that little shape out of it and you see that all the others are just following along with it they're they're essentially clones of this guy they're instanced and linked together so pretty easy to work with like uh, like that let's scope out again and that's uh, the start of our rim uh, next i want to make the tire but before we do that let's just group these together right now they're individual objects but you can actually group them which makes it easier to manipulate them together so I'll shift click on each of them until all of them are marked blue and then right click and group. And now they're treated as one object, but if you wanna to get to the individual objects, just scope in by double clicking. You go one, lay one level lower and you can select individual ones. Double click to scope out again. All right, let's continue making that tire. Now the tire is a little bit different and I, I wanna do a few special actions on that. And so remember that I kept this one in a certain orientation because it makes it easier to, um, to work with. I can rotate that upright, but let's make our tire first and I'll show you a bit what the limitations are that you have to keep in mind with symmetry and radials. So for our tire shape, I'll just use a uh, cube like this. Let's choose a, a black color just to make it obvious that it's a different mesh. I'll scale this up a lot, make this flatter. I will bevel it a bit and I'm gonna change the fill on the inside. So let's just try and get it to a proper positioning like that. Be just a bit bigger, change the fill a bit more. So I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. Now I'd like to have some symmetry on this because if I do something on the front of the tire, I want the back to follow along as well. So if I right click and go to symmetry and turn it on, you see that the symmetry plane is actually over the red X axis. And um, to get that, I, I can't change that axis for now in Modeler. So to get that to work, I have to rotate my mesh, place it, and then modify it afterwards. So I'm going to rotate it by holding Control and changing this gizmo. And you see that the symmetry is already active. So if I hold down Control, I can rotate it like that. And now my symmetry is across the proper plane. Right? So I'll press Spacebar to apply that guy. There it is, it's been created. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this tire can be quite a bit softer than the rim. And if I look at the resolution, it's, it's pretty dense actually. It doesn't have to be that dense. So I'm going to just decrease that a little bit beforehand. Let's actually do one step more. That looks about right. Because if I want this to feel like softer rubber, it's actually better to use lower resolution. High resolution is not necessarily better. Um, so I'll, I'll think I'll be okay with that for now. So let's scope out take my rim here and we'll just rotate that the same way. So hold down control, rotate it like that. And because it wasn't positioned uh, perfectly on the zero line, I can press R twice and then it snaps back. So first it resets the orientation and then the position. After that, I can just rotate it again. And you see now it's perfectly aligned to my mesh again. I don't have that issue of misalignment. Uh, the reason for that is if you group something, it changes the group pivot, and this one might not have been perfectly in the center. So uh, that's uh, it's an easy easy thing to fix as long as you've built your mesh correctly. All right, so I want to start modifying this tire a bit. So let's double click to jump in there. And the first thing is this looks like a fake plastic block. It doesn't look like inflated rubber. So I'm going to use the warp tool again to modify that. And important with the warp tool, if you're gonna warp something, make sure you're scoped in because otherwise the warp affects everything around it and that's not necessarily a nice thing. So I'll reduce the hardness. And the warp tool isn't the easiest to use for this. It's definitely possible to do it. So you can see that with the symmetry on, I'm affecting two sides. And I'm going to approximately set it up somewhere over here. I'm gonna zoom out so that I have a good view on it because I wanna be able to use this handle as well. Press spacebar 
pull it outwards. And then here's the trick. While holding spacebar, I'll scale it down a bit as well. And see how I'm getting a bit of this bulge on the tire? Let go of spacebar, and it applies the warp. And then the middle, of course, is starting to look a bit weird. So I'm just going to get a bit closer to it and then press this inwards again, like so. And the symmetry is kind of key to keep the two sides the same. Uh, if you don't do the symmetry, you could fix it by duplicating it and then merging it, but we're, we're not going to get into that. Um, the one thing that I do want to do is I want to make the tire a bit thinner again, and I can again do that with the warp tool. So let's get it into position like this and just bring it in a bit closer like that. Got a bit of a, an edge on it. That's because my warp wasn't ideal. So I'll just undo it, scope back in, and I want to make this thing a bit bigger and then reduce the hardness again. So the goal with the hardness for me is to keep the outer edge sort of um, unmodified and to get the inside to move along. So something like this. Yeah, that's looking about right. Okay. All right, so scope out again. There's my tire. Um, it's, I'll admit, it's pretty hard to get this to work properly. You'd have to do some smoothing and so forth, or you could do quite a lot of warps, but this is what I found was the easiest method uh, so far. All right, so to finish this up, I want to teach you one more thing. We want to get a nice off-road wheel pattern going on on this, uh, this tire. So I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to use a cube this time around for it. And the hard part about this is I want radial symmetry on that cube, but I'm not going to get that easily by default. So let's just move this little cube out here, apply it once. And actually, before I do that, make a new layer, move it out. I have to turn off the symmetry. So place my little cube like that. Then I'm going to scope out, select it, turn on radial repetition. So we, we know the drill with this one. I just want to repeat it quite a lot more. So under the radial repetition, let's increase this a lot. And I'm probably going to go for something over 30, I think 38 or... Yeah, that, that looks about right. That's a good start. Now, the annoying thing with, with when you're doing this is um, you're moving the individual objects. You, you, you can't really move the entire thing at once. And that's kind of hard to... Um, to manage. So let me just undo some of those changes. There we go. The way to move all of them together is to select them, right click and group them, and then they become an individual object that you can easily manipulate, right? So I can set this up right, then just jump into the group. I'll select an individual one, and I can move them down, start modifying them a bit. So double click again to scope in. I'm going to start cutting this out and making it a little bit more um, interesting and more of a, a wheel shape. Right, so let's cut a part off over there. Let's cut a part off over there. Let's switch back to the regular clay brush again, like so. And I'm going to try and match the positioning of that first cube. Like so move that one over there. Make it a bit smaller. I'll probably add a bit more bevel to it as well. All right. This one over there. And hit spacebar again to apply one over there. And see, it looks like my, my uh, one mesh isn't exactly in the middle. So a way to fix that would be to use the warp tool. Go into the cube mode. And with the cube mode, I can set the hardness all the way up to maximum. And it allows me to just modify and move things around fairly easily like that. So you can do adjustments. Let's make one more cut. Um, I want to get this to look slightly interesting. So place that one there. Make that a bit smaller. All right. Cut that piece out. Actually, let's undo that and get it a little bit more in the middle. Cut that out over there. Now, I think that this is still a little bit too sharp looking. Uh, there's a few ways to do it. I could take the the smooth tool and smooth it excessively, but actually an easier way to, uh, to do it is to again, scope out, select it, and then reduce the resolution on it. So each time I reduce the resolution, it becomes softer and it looks 
just a little bit better. And it looks fairly straight, so I'm gonna scope in one last time, like so. Grab my warp tool, make that a bit bigger. I'm gonna add, oh, and I've used 100% hardness. That's not really what I was after. Makes quite a big difference, as you can see. Add a bit of a V pattern to that. And obviously, I also want to add a bit of a bulge by making them higher towards the top. And I can even push in the edges a bit like that. And it looks like my sphere wasn't perfectly aligned, so let's just try that again. Sometimes if you want a bit more movement, you can set the hardness up to do something like this. Yes, that's what I'm after. So go to that edge, hit spacebar, push it down. Okay, that's starting to look better. All right, let's scope out. And the last step now is to put these two together to actually make them look like they're connected. So I'll scope out all the way to the top, select my tread pattern, select the tire itself, right click and choose merge and it merges the two together. You get something like this. Obviously I've gone quite fast. You could refine this a lot more, um, but the techniques are there. Uh, you know how to do repetitions, merges, subtracts, booleans, um, and so forth. Um, so I hope this helps you get started with Modeler. Have fun, bye.